you, you talked about remote control. That was your first being like your first job, your real job. Right. Did you, was there, how long were you writing prior to that? I came out of improv. So I, I was in an improv group in college with a lot of really great people, including my roommate, who was Joan Cusack. Um, and some other people that ended up at Second City and having interesting careers like Holly Wartell and Evan Gore and um, a uh, Academy Award winning director uh, for short documentaries, Eric Simonson. Um, a bunch of, uh, they, we were all great friends. And then we moved down ch to Chicago to, to, to be in an improv group there uh, to continue sort of what we were doing in college. But I, because we needed to do a show every Tuesday, there's a certain amount where it was improvised and then there was a certain sort of sketch element to it. And so I was really drawn to the sketch element to it. Uh, and even though I didn't, you wouldn't say I wrote the sketch out, I would outline the sketch. Um, so I knew what I wanted and what I wanted the actors in the sketch to do. So I sort of gave them lines or I gave them through lines or I gave a beginning and middle and end. So I learned how to write by, by having to do this show every Tuesday. And I wanted to generate new material all the time um, for the cast and also myself to create characters, mm -hmm. um, you know, to fulfill my dream of never getting on SNL. And so that's how I, that's how I learned how to write. And from that, expanding that sort of idea into what I was doing with Ben to do vignettes for that movie. And then start that, that sort of, it's like a, an evolution of learning how to write sort of by writing itself. Get so I had not TV. written for a TV show before remote yeah. control, but I had written a pilot for a talk show, which was very written out even, you know, even the monologue. Um, yeah. so I sort of learned as I went along, but I had to do it every week. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, I mean, that's a good way to stay in practice though. Now, a lot of people, they'll say this, they'll say, Hey, listen, there's nothing wrong with following your dreams and right. doing what you love, but until you get paid for it, you're just a glorified intern. Now that's some people say that. So let me ask you this. How long was it before when you were putting your name to stuff and get it out of there? Did it turn from doing what you love to actually now I'm getting paid for it? Yeah. I, I, I look at my time at MTV as, as my interning years because mm -hmm. they didn't pay. Shit. Okay. Right. So we, uh, I guess my first real writing gig, I mean, that I was supposedly being paid for was a um, special, an hour special, a half hour special for Colin Quinn, who was one of the stars of remote control and a brilliant comedian. Mm -hmm. Um, and a very good actor. So he wanted to, he was like, you know, he was bored with remote control in a way and he wanted to do more stuff. And so they teamed him up with Ben and I, and we wrote the Colin Quinn back to Brooklyn special. Mm -hmm. And I was paid nothing. In fact, I was at whatever I was going to be paid because of the cost that it, it was costing MTV to make this thing right. And it's really funny and it's probably still watchable even, even if it's a little bit dated because of just how, just, it was just funny. Mm -hmm. um, and Colin is great and Ben is in it. And, you know, there's a bunch of different, you know, uh, and mirrors in it. And um, trying to think if there's any, there's a bunch of different comedians in it. And um, it's just, it was great fun to do. Um, but it cost a lot for MTV. They were, you know, and, and to subsidize the cost, they asked us to throw our salaries in. So I could pay nothing for months and months of work, you know, even doing some acting and, you know, it, but I viewed it as like, you know what? I'm learning. Right. I'm learning how to write. I'm learning how to produce a television show. I'm learning what it takes to do a short movie. Um, I'm helping in casting, I'm helping in developing. It's like, where else am I gonna learn this? All right, yeah. so they're not paying me, but they're giving me this amazing opportunity to get something on the air. I think mm -hmm. the idea that we're owed a career is probably the wrong way to go about it. It's an honor for them, to people 
who have the money to give you their money to make your artistic vision into a reality. If we yeah. look at it like that, instead of looking at like, oh, come on, I'm so great, you know, and give yourself some time to learn your craft before, you know, you make all, you know, your money, you know, eventually you will, you know, and eventually MTV gave me a job on remote control where they actually paid me. Right. And so I got the experience of doing this thing and MTV ended up giving me this job. And then they gave us the Ben Stiller show. So in some ways I feel, well, you know, barely made any money, but where else am I going to get that experience? Like, and does anybody else have this now? I don't know. I mean, I felt I was lucky. Yeah, that's a great way of looking at it. I mean, there's definitely value and experience and just being right there in the mix of things for doors to open potentially, things like that. But value doesn't doesn't pay the bills. So were you right. like having to supplement your income in other ways while working pretty much full time on these projects? Um, well, once I got on remote control, um, I was making something of a salary. Don't forget New York at the time, I was renting a one bedroom with my friend uh, with a view of Central Park on 103rd, 102nd Street in Central Park West for $1,400. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like what? Right? 700 each. So I could afford that. You know, and I lived in, when I lived in Chicago, I was paying 300 for rent. Mm -hmm. wow. You know, splitting a place with Harry Lennox for that was 350. This is what we were paying. So I didn't have to, because, you know, like the rents in New York and LA and here in Boston, I mean, they're so out of control. I mean, I would have had no, I don't know. I, it, I had a different reality. Mm -hmm. Right. I didn't, I didn't have to. Uh, yeah. I had jobs in Chicago as the world's worst waiter to supplement my income. And then I would once in a while get a commercial that brought in considerably more and sort of try to live off of that. But um, as a, you know, doing commercials, like I did five or six commercials and they brought in, a, you know, pretty good money for short periods of time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't have, my expenses weren't that, weren't that great. Yeah. That's, that's a good, yeah. Yeah. Keep it. But it, was there ever a time where it was like, I, let me ask it this way. Did you find it hard to be productive under this, under this stress of, if there was stress to like keep the lights on or make rent this month, did that affect productivity or did it fuel it? No, I just kept getting fired in Chicago <laughs> okay. over and over and over again. I mean, I, just, I just was just sort of like, just, you know, mm -hmm. getting enough to get through it. And I didn't have, I didn't have to like my kid in LA just moved out. He, my kid is going to be 23 and um, he's a musician and they just graduated last June. Um, just moved out of Annabelle, my ex, my ex wife's house. Um, and he's, they have to pay a thousand dollars a month rent. I never, I never had to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, nice. I'm like, Whoa, that is just, you know, and yeah. that's not, that's, that's their share right. oh, of the wow. rent. Yeah. I paid $700 and in New York city. And that's when I had a, a job that paid me enough that I could, you know, it was certainly, I didn't have a lot of stuff, but you know, I was able to get by and eat and keep the lights on. Um, and then I started getting more work after that. I started, Ben and I started to get scripts and started to get paid. And I started to get more money after, after um, the Ben Stiller show on MTV, so, you know, okay. writing a pilot and all that stuff. So, um, and that's like 90, 91. So if I would say that if I graduated in 84, I didn't really make any money to speak of until, you know, 91 almost a decade so i i think i know the answer to this question and quite honestly i'm really just asking it for the soundbite that will hopefully inspire struggling aspiring writers out there but if if the opportunity never came to make this a job uh where you where you can make money where you could pay bills by writing would you right. would you like did you have a 
Do you have like a, a mental thing in your mind? Like if it doesn't happen by this time, I've got to figure something else out. Or would you just, was that never even a question or would you just still never be Never a question for me. Not, not to begin with. I, I wanted to be an actor, right? So yeah. that, I mean, that's like really oblivious to reality, right? You can't live in reality and want to be an actor because you'd, you'd be like, this is, this is ridiculous. Who doesn't want to be an actor? You know, yeah. um, and I just wanted it, you know, and I wanted to be on stage and I and I got on stage. I just didn't get paid for it. I did lots of theater in Chicago and I was doing improv all the time. I did stand up comedy. Uh, I was in improv groups. I worked at Second City. Uh, I worked with Del Close. I was performing constantly. You know, there was constant being uh, performing on and off stage, being in plays, doing commercials. Um, I never stopped. Uh, it was hard to, to work a day job with all that stuff because, because I was so focused on trying to make it. Um, and as I said, you know, I was just the worst waiter of all time, easily flustered, terrible in math. Um, just, uh, not interested. I'd go like three days and the people would be like, well, thank you. Yeah, like you're not and trying to work your way shop. up to general manager or anything. Right, you don't right. want to be there. <laughs> sure. I did later in life to answer the question in retrospect, when I'm not your age, but when I was my age now and I wasn't getting the work that I used, used to get. And I was like, you know, I have to make a change mm -hmm. for my own sanity. So I went back and got my MFA in creative writing literature at Bennington College and um, graduated in, in 2019. And I've been working on trying to be a teacher for full time, which I really love. Passion. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, yeah, I saw that you uh, had a, a page on the teachers. We'll, I'll definitely get into that for sure. Uh, let me ask you this, Jeff. What do you, what do you tell the, the writer whose ink is almost drying their pen or they hit the punch the last thing on their typewriter if kids still have those out there nine days? Uh, what do you tell that person who's aspiring to be a writer and they're in a very dark place right now? I mean, I'm not even talking writer's block. I'm talking about they pen three or four scripts. They, they're right. sending out, they're not getting anything and they're just about on the brink of saying, you know what? I gave it all I had, man. What do you tell them? So I was going to say, well, like, you know, I have a lot of students, but I don't really hear that from my students. I don't, you know, either they're in college or they're doing um, post-college sort of, uh, you know, UCLA extension kind of stuff. And uh, I don't really hear that very much from them. I, they seem so hopeful to me. Uh, it kind of maybe that they don't understand what it takes, why, why it's so difficult to create a television show, which is really the hardest thing. The hardest writing in entertainment is not movie writing, it's creating a television show. And which makes the pilot actually the hardest script you could possibly write. Because you have to create entire show and all the characters, the world, the tone, uh, where it's going, uh, the thematic element of your show. I mean, there's so much that goes into it, um, so much work. Uh, and then from that, you take this little piece of it and you, you try to make the prototype, you know, episode. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. Um, if somebody's that frustrated, I'd say like, you know, well, maybe put it aside for a little while. Uh, I, I'm not sure what it is that, I don't know what kind of feedback that they're getting. So, I mean, it's hard to say, it's like a very general question. Like, you know, would I be encouraging? I don't know. I don't know their work. You know, if they're generating material that is unfocused, um, is uh, confusing to read, is overly complicated, uh, is convoluted uh, in story or character, uh, I'd say, you know what, maybe you need to take a class. Maybe you need to separate yourself from your aspirations for a while and work on your craft. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe you need to do that and then come back to it. Because if you're just writing in a vacuum and the feedback you're getting is not positive, then you have to take that, you have to let it, you have to put your ego aside and say, okay, I really want to do this, but somehow it's not working. So yeah. let me hear what the, the feedback is and let me recalibrate my thinking, take a course or two, get in a writing group and, uh, 
try it all, try it again from a different perspective. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, the only thing you can do as a writer, which beats the hell out of being an actor, is that you can keep generating material, no matter mm -hmm. what you're doing. Yeah, true. Right? Writer. You can always do that. Yeah. Um, but if you keep getting the same feedback, or if you keep externalizing, well, it's them, it's not me. You know, I have nothing to learn. I'm so great. Well, maybe it is you. Because mm -hmm. I think, you know, what really stands in our way in life the most is our egos. Mm -hmm. you know, and the expectations of our egos. And that's a old man's, you know, who's, who's had his share of ego problems coming at yeah. you right now. The ego is the problem because it shuts you down, mm -hmm. you know, and you stop, you stop understanding that, you know, writing is not a race. It's a process. Mm. Yeah. And there really isn't a good and bad in that process, there's only a better. And that's what yep. I tell my students. It's not about good and bad right now. It's about how do we get you to better? Yeah. It's a becoming yeah, process. That's really good advice. Not at all what I was expecting. I was right. expecting fluff. That wasn't fluff. That's why I want to for fluff. When the ink yeah. is dry, when the time <laughs> you hit the last stroke. <laughs> I'm not, um, a, I'm not really a fluff guy. No, you're not. <laughs> and, 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 and for my students, I think it's kind of hard sometimes because I just give it to them, you know? I, I'm not trying to discourage them. I'm just saying like, you gotta take it now from me because you get out there in the world, they, no one gives a damn. I care yeah. at least, I care yeah. about you, you know? Like right. I care about your future, I care about your script and, and, and I'm a, you know, you, use me for that. But I have to give you the reality of the situation. That's the price you have to pay. Yeah, that's, I mean, you're, as, a, as a teacher, not only, you're not only giving them experience and how to write, but how to deal with that pushback. Yeah, you got to deal with it. The, the younger students, like the B, my students in BU, it's really difficult for them because they just, they're just, they're like, but just tell us what to do and we'll do it. Yeah, well. Then it's my script. You know. <laughs> but that's, you know, they're in college and they want, you know, they want, you know, very set rules and regulations. And let me ask you this now, of course, uh, this is a little bit of a switch, at least for us. But you started writing, you've written for the Huffington Post, you've written scripts and you've written a novel. Is there a particular form of writing that you prefer? Is it just you love writing? I love writing, but I just heard somebody. Oh, I know who it was. Um, Fran, Fran uh, Leibowitz say any writer who loves writing is not a good writer. And so I heard that and I was like, oh God, well, maybe that's my problem. Um, I do love writing. It's very hard to write. I, I didn't, you know, I started my, I wrote a memoir, so it's a nonfiction. Um, and then I began writing a novel, trying to learn how to write a novel when I was in grad school as an old man. <laughs> so I, cause I was like, I've never written a novel before, you know? And so I, you know, it's very, it's hard. It, it, it's really hard uh, to write anything. Um, I enjoy partnerships in writing. You know, I've had Ben as a partner and I had a lean and I, and, and, and uh, my God, how lucky is that to work with two absolutely top of the game, a listing, brilliant, um, no one better than people. Like I got to work with them both. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I just, I, I, and I like working with students because I feel like even though it's not my script, it's their script, I'm still working on a script, right? Yeah. I'm still working on, on a television uh, treatment. Mm -hmm. And so even the act of writing or being a teacher, to, trying to teach somebody how to be a writer is, is fun for me. Maybe I love it too much. Maybe that's my problem. Um, mm. <laughs> but it is hard. And you know, writing alone, you know, writing with a partner, especially in comedy can be really fun and um, make the hours fly. And sometimes writing alone can be very sort of isolating, especially with comedy, because you, you don't know, like, is this funny or not? Like, like yeah. I always knew what was funny because, you know, even if Ben, because Ben wouldn't laugh, but he would go like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. And then he'd be like, then he'd be look at me and go, that, why, why'd you write that? That's what is that funny to you? 
And I'd be like, no, no, it's not. I don't know why I wrote it. I'm, I'm, I'm terrible. Fire me. I, <laughs> like, it's frightening, you know? But I knew it's like, he'd be like, funny. And then I knew it was good. And Aline would laugh. Yeah. She would, I, you know, if, if I made Aline laugh, I was like, that's funny. I know it's funny. But so, when you're alone, like, it's hard to tell. It's, it's you know, it's yeah. tough work. Yeah. That, that's um, I, I, on your instructor page on uh, UCLA, there's actually a quote that I thought was pretty great. It said it, you, about writing, you said it's hard work and it's totally worth it. So I was, I'm curious, what would it, what would you say is the biggest challenge that makes writing hard work and what makes it totally worth it for you? The, the hardest thing about writing is that because of our egos, we think that the first thing that we write is the thing, right? So mm -hmm. the real hard thing about writing is like, even after like, Pilot writing is different because you have to create an entire show. So that's just hard. This is yeah. playing out hard. But script writing is that the first draft is just, blah, you know, it's rewriting and rewriting and rewriting and rewriting and rewriting and rewriting. And do you have the discipline and do you have the focus and do you have the energy and do you have the lack of ego to be able to say like, you know what, this was good two weeks ago. It's not that good right now. Mm -hmm. Somebody like working with somebody like Ben taught me that because, because I'd be like, this is so good. And Ben would be like, mm, I don't, I don't, this is, I don't, maybe we should just throw it out. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, what, you know, but he's right. It's like, just, you gotta, that's what the hardest thing is. It's like, you think what you write is brilliant because you wrote it and it seemed really good in the moment it can be better and yeah. it can always be better. And that's really hard. I think if you're honest with yourself, the longer that you're doing it and the more you go back and cause that something that I've learned, like when I, when making movies is um, the latest thing is always the best thing. But then yeah. I go back and watch what I thought was my best thing in 2004 and I wouldn't show it to anybody now. So right. well, you can only be who you are in that time that you write it. Right. You can only be yeah. the actor that you are when you acted in that time. You can only be the writer that you are. So of course, you know, and you do certain things well in different times. Like, you know, Jerry Seinfeld has a book about writing comedy that just came out for writers or for comedians. And it really retraced, uh, I, I saw him being interviewed and it, he keeps all of his jokes and he sort of like says, this is what I was doing here as a child. And, you know, and, and these are the jokes I wrote here. And here's the jokes I wrote in, you know, 78. And here's the jokes I wrote in 85. And, and it was like, yeah, some of it makes him cringe. But then he thought, well, you know, this is who I was then. And this is mm -hmm. what was good for me then. And because mm -hmm. I was able to do that then, I got to the other points of my career. Yeah. Let me ask you this, because since we're on writing, we're almost, we're going to let you go here. And I appreciate all the time you've given us. Okay. The, the joy you get from writing is it the same joy that you get when you're teaching some of your students about writing or is it a different feeling altogether? It's pretty similar, I think. Uh, it's a similar feeling of like being in a artistic process. Mm -hmm. okay. And, um, you know, it, it feels a little different when, it's, when I'm creating and I haven't, and I haven't written, uh, I wrote a, a I wrote a, a pilot with Aline for Aline's company for ABC Productions. That was the last thing I did before I left LA. And that was really great and fun for me and um, getting to work with Aline again, um, even though it was, I was doing it alone and then I would work it with her in a, in a room, just her and I, that was really fun. I don't think anything is, is as fun as that because it's like your stuff, but it's pretty exciting to work on a young writer's ideas and try to feel like, you know, maybe this guy or maybe this girl, you know, this young person is going to get to that point where they're going to get, they're going to get work or maybe they're going to get a show on the air someday. Like are, who's going to be the one who's going to be the lucky one out of this group, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and I know, and I try to like, you know, it's exciting to hear the ideas. It's exciting to develop concepts. It's, it's you know, to, to create new characters with them. It's hard because there, 
they hold on and they're scared. And, and, and I remember, I remember feeling those things. I remember feeling holding on and scared and not wanting to listen to the feedback that was coming, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it's challenging to be a teacher in that way. And I also feel like it's also satisfying in an artistic way as well. Yeah. Why don't you subscribe? It'll last longer. <laughs>